Today's presentation deals with the Large Area Picosecond Photo Detector, or LAPPD. Uh, we will share results developed by our collaborators and co-authors, including some very exciting picosecond timing results that we're discussing for the first time. And we will describe how LAPPD is being evaluated for uh, future PET applications. Uh, this uh, slide shows an overview of the presentation. We begin with uh, attributes and performance uh, overview, uh, picosecond uh, timing, uh, PET imaging applications. We'll discuss some exciting uh, electronic readout boards that are being developed uh, for LAPPD. Uh, we'll describe some life testing uh, and uh, talk about the availability and cost of LAPPD and conclude with a short discussion of uh, applications. The uh, attribute and performance uh, overview for uh, LAPPD, uh, well, it's a very large area, uh, MCP PMT, the world's largest at 350 square centimeter with an open area ratio of 92%. The design allows flexible control of all operating voltages. And this is very important as it relates to the results we're going to share regarding picosecond timing. Uh, the wiring is shown in the lower right of your slide. These detectors get very high gain, up to 10 to the seventh. Uh, they rely on a bialkali photocathode where we're able to get routinely 20 to 30 percent QE and uh, maybe less routinely, but occasionally uh, uh, in the high 28 to 34 uh, percent regime. Position resolution, less than three millimeters. And as we'll show, uh, time resolution between uh, 10 and 80 picoseconds a key uh, element of the LAPPD is the low cost uh, based on uh, dollars per centimeter square, uh, and we'll discuss that. So as far as the uh, timing is concerned, we're uh, referring back to some really exciting work being done uh, by our collaborators at INFN uh, Bologna, Italy, uh, where they're uh, looking at the LAPPD in possible anticipation of some CERN upgrade applications. Uh, they began their study of uh, Tile 69 with a rigorous calibration of both the DRS-4 ASIC and the free space laser that they were using uh, and understood that that's necessary to achieve appropriate performance. Uh, the DRS-4 board comes pre-calibrated from the factory, but that default uh, calibration is not particularly accurate, particularly for timing. Uh, they followed a uh, published uh, procedure for calibration, uh, the details are rather uh, challenging and certainly not for a short presentation. Uh, they also used an extended warm-up of the LAPPD, which allowed the device to settle down before taking data. And we believe that this was also responsible for them being able to explore uh, some different voltage settings than what we were able to get in our own studies of the tile. Well, this next slide, number five, uh, shows uh, a first uh, high-level view of the picosecond timing and the role of calibration. So on the left, you see the transit time spread uh, as measured by INCOM uh, at 62.1 picoseconds for single photoelectrons. Uh, the INFN group was able to uh, replicate that, substantially replicate that result uh, in their measurement using the uh, DRS-4 at the factory calibration. Uh, but when they completed an offline uh, calibration, uh, the uh, transit time spread dropped down to 54 picoseconds, an important, uh, an important reduction in time. The INFN group uh, continued to explore different operating points for the LAPPD. And in this case, uh, they used a multi-photoelectron uh, scan, uh, focusing on a single strip uh, and doing time resolution versus MCP voltage for two uh, photocathode settings, both 50 volts and 100 volts. They found that the best timing was achieved with the photocathode voltage at 100 volts and with the MCPs at uh, 785 volts, which is a fairly low voltage. Uh, the net result was uh, a uh, sigma transit time spread of 11.2 picoseconds, which translated to uh, 10 picoseconds once uh, the uh, subtraction for electronics and laser jitter was uh, implemented. Uh, this particular uh, uh, 
uh, set of data gives us uh, further encouragement that when we are able to implement uh, ALD GCA MCPs with uh, even smaller 10 micron pores, uh, that we're going to be able to operate at even still lower uh, picosecond uh, timing. This slide makes the point that uh, INFN uh, was able to identify optimized voltage and exposure uh, operating points for enhanced transit time spread results. And in this particular uh, uh, slide, uh, they explored uh, high rate uh, scans. Previous uh, or prior measurements were performed at low repetition rates of about uh, 500 hertz. The beam uh, spot was kept defocused to uh, mimic uh, an electromagnetic shower. Uh, and the operating voltages selected are shown as given, 800 volts on the MCP and the photocathode voltage at 50 volts. The measurements were performed with an average of 200 uh, photoelectrons, so multi-photoelectron. A signal amplitude, which is not shown, decreases with increased rate and is strongly reduced at the highest rate tested, which was five megahertz. The plot basically shows that the time resolution remains below 20 picoseconds, up to a rate of about 100 kilohertz, and then starts to increase, uh, reaching 115 picoseconds at 5 megahertz. Uh, we remain optimistic that uh, when the uh, small poor MCPs uh, are available, that we will be able to get to uh, remain at uh, low transit time spreads at the higher rates. Now, this slide is uh, something of a, a summary. Uh, and again, the INFN results show that uh, the INCOM reported transit time spread results understate the native performance of LAPPD. Uh, corrective actions are currently underway at, uh, at INCOM, uh, but the key takeaways are depending on your application and the set points that you are able to operate the LAPPD, you might get different uh, timing that range from a single photoelectron 50 picoseconds uh, all the way down to uh, multi-photoelectron 16.3 picoseconds, and under certain uh, low voltage conditions, uh, 10 picoseconds. Well, as you would appreciate, the uh, PET community has shown a great deal of interest in the LAPPD, and this is driven primarily by the picosecond uh, timing aspects uh, of that device, but uh, also by the low cost uh, per centimeter square, the planar design and the uh, uh, potential of having uh, onboard uh, electronics. Uh, we now have two groups that are uh, showing interest in evaluating the LAPPD. Uh, this slide addresses the work of Bill Worstel from PicoRad Imaging and Hamid Sabet from the Mass General Hospital and the Harvard Medical School. Uh, they have available to them a femtosecond laser. Uh, and a high-speed oscilloscope, and they uh, split the beam of that uh, laser and allow it to pinge, impinge on, the, uh, on two of the anode strips that characterize the Gen 1 LAPPD. They use optical filters to attenuate the laser pulse intensity to achieve single photon uh, emission, and they're also evaluating uh, the waveform timing using three algorithms uh, and uh, I'm pleased to say that uh, they've been able to uh, substantially replicate the timing that uh, we measured for LAPPD41. Uh, uh, and, um, and as far as the algorithms are concerned, that they really are uh, very, very similar in, in the result. Uh, they also are measuring transit time spread versus a photocathode voltage and see uh, no change observed for pulses greater than 20 millivolts. Uh, the second group doing uh, uh, PET imaging studies is uh, the UC Davis uh, PET group under Simon Cherry, uh, with the work being uh, led by uh, Sunil uh, Kwan. Uh, in his studies, he's placing two LYSO uh, scintillating crystals on uh, two of the uh, strip line anodes uh, that are characteristic of the Gen 1 uh, LAPPD tile. They're separated by about 12 centimeters, as uh, shown in the image in the upper left corner, and between them that he's placing a, a sodium-22 source and then evaluating and, and measuring the coincidence timing as he varies the voltage uh, settings through uh, four sets of uh, anode uh, voltage, MCP voltage, and photocathode voltage. 
Uh, as a result of his studies, uh, Sunil Kwan saw a progressively improving uh, coincidence uh, timing uh, uh, resolutions uh, as he progressed through the different uh, voltage set points till he got to voltage set number three, uh, where he was seeing uh, 298 uh, uh, full width half max coincidence uh, timing uh, and a 19% energy resolution. Uh, going on to voltage set number four, the coincidence timing result improved, but at the expense of the energy resolution. Uh, nonetheless, uh, based on these results, uh, the feedback was very, very encouraging uh, for the potential use of LAPPD for PET uh, subject, of course, to some further optimization studies. Those studies now include uh, the evaluation of um, uh, lead oxide glass radiators in a, a Sharankov study that I believe Sunil Kwan is currently running, and he will be reporting his results uh, this next uh, Saturday uh, morning. Uh, one of the uh, more exciting uh, things that are going on with the LAPPD is uh, at least two vendors have now come forward, two electronics vendors have come forward uh, to provide a readout electronics that will be uh, attached directly beneath the LAPPD and connected to it electrically uh, so that all the performances can be uh, read out without uh, long uh, time delay uh, encountering the wiring and, and so on. Uh, the ultralytics boards have actually at this point been designed and fabricated and are under test uh, with the ultralytics uh, team uh, and they're able to report that they're seeing a significant speed improvement uh, using the board or evaluating the timing on the board as compared to what one might expect if you were daisy chaining uh, the drs4 eval readouts uh, Another key feature of their readout board is that a lot of the data reduction will be done on the FPGA uh, with results uh, ported uh, away from the detector uh, using a fiber optic link, uh, which uh, should also be a great uh, cable burden reducer. Uh, Nelu Scientific uh, is uh, also a uh, ASIC a developer based in Honolulu, and they've been very, very innovative in development of ASICs for uh, high-speed uh, readout. Uh, the so-called Aardvark uh, ASIC uh, has timing accuracy of 10 picosecond across the electronic uh, channels, uh, and uh, it's a variable rate, fast timing, low dead time uh, ASIC. Uh, they have a uh, Phase one SBIR contract, Incom is a subcontractor for evaluation, uh, and they hope to have a readout board uh, as early as next summer. Uh, life testing is also going on, in this case at University of Texas in Arlington. It's an innovative, non-destructive approach that looks at after pulses. They've done calculations now that uh, show that uh, in 80 days of full saturation, uh, irradiation and operation, they can expose uh, a, sh a small area to 10 coulombs per centimeter square. That'll damage that one spot, but presumably leave the rest of the tile um, fully functional. At least that's what they promised us uh, when we gave them this tile to test. Um, the cost drivers uh, for LAPPD are really the design attributes of the detector itself. Uh, and um, we expect that when uh, production pricing is in play, uh, that we're going to be down in the uh, 58 to $79 per centimeter square regime, which competes very, very favorably with uh, other commercial MCP, PMTs, and even SIPM. So as far as application is concerned, uh, the real point here is that we've got uh, LAPPD, uh, 20 of them at different uh, early adopter sites in various stages of evaluation. Uh, and let me conclude uh, by saying uh, the, the takeaway messages are summarized here. Large area, high gain, uh, low projected cost, 10 picosecond demonstrated timing, uh, performance consistent with PET, electronic readout board soon to be available, uh, life testing gonna be uh, ready in about uh, three months. Uh, and competitive pricing compared to uh, SIPMs. I would like to thank all of you for your attention and invite any questions that you might have uh, or to reach out to me at INCOM. Thank you.